Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, Nick Knight Turtle! Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? We're doing fantastic, sir. Appreciate you joining. If somebody's been living under a rock and they have no idea who you are, sir, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything you'd like. Um, I'm from Canada, the land with the moose and maple syrup and poutine and all that shit. And uh, I'm the weird guy who does faces on the internet and occasionally makes music and plays guitar and usually surprises people that I do that. And you do surprise us. Uh, we were actually, before you got here, dude, we were we were playing the hip hop track that you did. Uh, I forget the title of it. We played it like 30 or 40 minutes ago. But it has, hmm. it, it has like a rock element, like a trap core kind of vibe to it. Uh, where do you get your inspiration from if when you wake up? If today's just a jamming, make a YouTube video day, today's a make a new record, what is a normal day like for Nick? Uh, it varies. A, a Sunday for me is to plan the whole week, and that determines, you know, what I'm doing for, you know, and sometimes it's it changes and I have to adapt to things, but, you know, what I'm doing on Monday for YouTube, Wednesday and Friday, YouTube, what I'm doing for the short content, what I'm doing on stream for the five days I stream um and it all kind of varies but you know regular day is wake up at nine or ten uh you know work out if, if it's a if it's a gym day and eat something and then fucking just start editing do a lot of admin a lot of people underestimate how much time admin like emails and planning things and following through with things take uh and the rest is usually editing videos and the smallest amount of my time is actually writing music <laughs> The smallest uh, amount is writing music. Uh, that just comes quick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's also because I've, I just, li I've covered so many songs in my lifetime and also just like, you know, even, even done series like Heaviest Riffs and studied song structure so much that like, um, you know, if I want to write like a big banger, that's like some big, really unique, crazy thing. Like, yeah, that will take me a little bit. Sometimes it is like just lightning in a bottle and I'll get lucky. Um, but if I'm like trying to recreate a style or go for like, hey, let's like try to write like a Deftonesy song, that I can usually get down in like a couple a couple hours from start to finish. If being if I identify like, okay, that's the main riff, that's maybe going to be the chorus, you know, structure the song, get it done, add a cool bridge, add some production, ship it, and and that's it. Now we've had we've had Andy Sizik on the show uh, before in the past, and he said it was a pleasure to work with you. I would like to know how that project came about because Termino is badass, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, Termino was, um, it was actually a project that technically before it was Termino, um, I, I started with my dude Ezekiel Pearson, who used to be in Down and Dirty for a minute because uh, he was leaving Down and Dirty and like we've talked and he was like, you know, do you want to start a project? And actually I, I had no interest in like starting any kind of project band because I was just going to, if I want to release music, I would just release it under my name and I would just put it as like a vocalist feature like Nick Nocturnal. Um, but I thought it was a cool opportunity. So I was like, okay. And then just didn't work out. And I had some demos and I was like, well, if I did hit up someone to do an actual project with who would I have hit up? And I was like, well, Andy, obviously. So I just hit him up on Facebook and within like five minutes, he was just like, yes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and that there's, was, there's the band right there. <laughs> that's that's kind of it. Yeah, that was the actual start of Termina then. My co-host today is JB. He goes by JB Music 661. I'm going to have him ask a couple questions in a bit, but uh I want to know when was your hey mama I made it moment. Uh oof. Um <laughs> that's an interesting one. I mean, I guess I always yeah, I'm always so like in the grind of things and so many things are on the table that like until I feel like everything is done and completed, I, I I'm still, you know, I haven't got to where I feel like I can get to potentially. So I've, I haven't had it to like an extreme, but there's definitely a moment where I was like, oh, I'm doing this for my life. Like, all right, like I'm all in, um, which was definitely, I think a couple of years ago when I just was able to even just make enough money to help like to pay rent and like to get my own place and just do all of that. Um, that was really the like, oh, okay, that's, uh, this is, I'm going for this one. <laughs> Let's hope, uh, you know, it, it, I don't get go homeless in a couple of years. Definitely. Hell yeah. Uh, JB, what you got? Hey, Nick. Thank you so much for coming up on uh, our podcast here or our interview on Twitch. With that being said, there is 
a lot of work that comes into you know the YouTube Shorts, your your all your socials. Do you have a team that runs it with you, or are you doing this all by yourself? No, nah, I do it myself. Um, unless it's the Twitch Clips channel, that's just literally a channel that like my mods just made and run, um, which is just for stuff that they take on Twitch and like throw it on there. Anything else, any like Nick Nocturnal, um, solely Nick Nocturnal channel is uh, all me, my YouTube um you know my tiktok my instagram my fucking facebook you know it's it's all just me and it's always just been me amazing what 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 advice do you have for for youtubers that that what do you what do you see that they do wrong the most in someone trying to do what you do um you gotta there's a couple things but it also depends what somebody wants out of you know being a youtuber um you know if you want sustainability then like there's there's a lot of things you need to try to do and prioritize differently than if you want to just crash and burn and you know try to hope you get a viral thing in like two years and then you're out um or you quit i've seen that happen so many times to probably 95 percent of the people i saw like on my way to where i am today after nine years of just you know people trying things going super hot doing one thing knowing it wasn't sustainable and then when they didn't get the results they wanted from it like the whatever in terms of views um they just quit and then they're, they're just gone like you never hear them again they're just like oh okay oh yeah that person used to make videos i forgot about that <laughs> so um you know doing things that you actually like i think is a surprising thing that a lot of people don't seem to do a lot of people seem to chase just trends of like what's this What's this person doing? You know, what's Mr. Beast doing? Um, which God, at least if you're gonna chase someone, at least chase Mr. Beast. Don't For chase, real. you know, just like like don't you, if you're a metal YouTuber, like don't try to like even co- copy. Try to be like, what's Nick doing? I'm gonna try to do that. Like, go look at what go look at what the kings of this stuff are doing. Like, they're at least paving the way. And even if you try to copy paste, you won't be able to because that's the that's the thing. You can't. There's no point of trying to copy paste someone that's doing something because they're known for that thing. They're they're the best at it. So you trying to just be better than them at their own thing. It's it's much easier for you to play to your own strengths, to um, build on those, play to a uniqueness, and play to what you have to offer. Like offer people value, like your your viewers. That's that's the biggest thing that I especially learned over the years. Like why would someone watch just because you did something and it's attached to the name of a big band like they don't give a fuck like why like no make it so you have something special to offer where people want to watch you because you do something special um you provide value to their lives you make their day better um and then inherently you won't you'll just a lot of things will naturally happen like people will just want to support you they'll want to come back they'll want to watch yourself they'll want to share it with people just because you took the time to provide value with your content. Uh, that's number one, I think, with anything. It's <laughs> with, a great uh, answer. I, I sent you an email saying that we do a trivia portion of the show regarding mm. hot sauce. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I do not eat spicy things. <laughs> okay. So are you still down to do some trivia, though? Because our job is... Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so the cool thing about the trivia is uh, you get to pick the topic. What movie or TV show have you seen so many times that if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped? <sighs> to me, it's easier if you pick a movie because I could pick, you know, season four, episode seven and ask a question about that and it gets a lot right, tougher. Right. I mean, dude, I haven't watched movies in a minute. Uh Maybe like if it's a movie, maybe Tenacious D, but like I haven't watched that in a long time. Nothing that, that when you were a kid that you saw like a hundred times over and over again, like Goonies or anything like that? Mm, not that I remember as much. Shows, I mean, just because I go to sleep watching it is The Office. I'll probably That's probably the easiest one for me. Okay. Give me a second on The Office. JB, shoot one more off. I'll be right there. Right on. So <clears throat> my question to you, when... When it comes to all your different editing, uh, what software do you use and do you find it easier now uh, or is it still, you know, the same kind of like, oh, I got to do this again kind of like work when it comes to your Mm. videos that you make? I use Adobe Premiere and I mean, it depends. Um, Editing for me is probably, besides admin, one of the more boring parts of the job just because it's 
like I did it. I, I, I filmed it. Right. And there is a lot of magic in the editing too, that, you know, it, it is its own craft and it, it can be, you know, engaging and fun. And there's many moments where I've edited videos of mine and the editing was like super fun and you try new things and you're like, Oh yeah. And explore. But you know, once you've edited enough videos, I feel like, and you know, I'm trying to do a, like a series that I've done before. And I already know, like, for example, like I do with like heaviest riff series, like I know how to edit that. I'm not going to edit that any differently. It's like, you make a compilation, you make sure it's all right. You make sure the names are right. You make sure the album artwork is right. Like it's more just like, get it done um and those those videos are more just uh mind numbing <laughs> i guess to kind of just sit there and be like yep you know i'm doing the, the the thing um but there's some videos i've done that are way more like like i said a creatively fun and those are the ones i i probably enjoy the most because they they're just like it's not it doesn't have to fall into a specific category or a series it's just like make it funny like make it entertaining like if it's, if it's not entertaining that's that's the only rule it's got to be entertaining um so that's when it's a lot more fun to edit but yeah editing is a uh, can get very monotonous very quickly as someone that does i've been doing reaction videos for eight years and i get so many videos red blocked what advice do you have for getting around the youtube copyright system and, and if we dispute them 90 percent of the time they get they get overturned, but it, it's a mystery when they get overturned. What is your advice for getting around the the copyright block? Oh, it's super simple. I just stopped reacting to things that I don't know the label or management or the band. I just stopped. I, like it's as simple as that. Like I, <laughs> I, I started that last year. I was just like, I'm not like, it, it's you know, regardless of the um, getting AdSense, like getting paid at least from YouTube for the video that you know you took time to edit and make that promotes the band. Um, I was just like, I'm also not dealing with this, like, oh, video got blocked shit anymore. I'm just not. So like I, um, I made kind of a, more of a stand on my channel last year and yeah, I just kept it ever since. I just was like, I'm, I, if I don't know the label and I don't know the publisher I, and I think there's going to be an issue, like I'm not touching it. I don't, I don't care. Is that um, a whitelisting thing because of your connection with the label? Yeah, it's a what? Yeah, so it's gotcha. You know, and it's not like every label. It's all weird the connections and you know the labels and publishers. Like some labels do their own distribution. Some, you know, are part of the publishing. Like it's all it's all very weird and wonky. Um, and there's some labels that are super easy for in terms of just like, hey, they know you provide value, so they'll take the sec the time to like you know get your video cleared. Um, and there's some that are, you know, just it's chaotic and it's not going to happen and that's cool too even if even if they want it to happen you know sometimes it's the higher ups that are like no you know because it's it's still a newer thing like the idea of whitelisting you know like people are used to getting money from their music being played like forever like since it's on radio and stuff or if it shows up on tv so you know it's a bit of that older mindset of well it shows up somewhere else that's ours right like that's what we're used to for generating money why aren't we getting you know, we should get money too from this YouTube internet space. Um, so I get that. I get that mindset. It's just an older mentality, and the industry is evolving past that to becoming more accepting of it. So, yeah, that's it. It's just like I, I know a lot of labels that you know fuck with me now, and I fuck with them, and it's very simple, and they they know what it's about. I never, I don't hide it. I don't beat around the bush when I talk to labels and management. Uh, if I hit them up, I'm straight up. I'm like. You know, I like your bands. Uh, would love to work with you guys if you want. In turn, but like I ask for, full, and I specify this full whitelisting, not this bullshit. Oh yeah, we'll whitelist and just make sure it doesn't get blocked. Like I'm mm -hmm. like root of the claim. Um, so no sharing, full monetization. No, no, no. no, no. It's it, look. I know how much money those bands uh, get when I do a reaction in return because I am a YouTuber and I know how much I charge for sponsored videos. And even though those videos like reactions aren't sponsored and I've actually never taken a penny from a label to ever do that, even though I could, I probably should, <laughs> to be honest, probably should have can make some easy fucking money doing that. I never took it because it's just its own thing. And I'm like, look, I know how much I charge for a sponsor video, like if it's like a plugin or an app or something. And I still don't have to be nice about what I'm, you know, checking out or talking about. I just have to include it on my channel in some capacity. So, um, uh yeah i i'm sure you guys will be able to uh forego your hundred or two hundred dollars of adsense you won't get um in return for the much bigger multiplier that your band receives in terms of 
sure fans but direct merch sales uh new ticket sales new people again fans to the band like it just they make way more money uh than just what they would make off monetizing one of the youtubers if it brings in enough views and a new audience as well makes sense let's see if you have seen the office as many times as you say okay. in the office obviously the u.s version season four where do michael and jan first kiss Oh, they kiss outside of that um, part, uh, like the Vegas night or gamble night mixer uh, outside of the, I think it's technically outside of the office. It's outside near a car. It's it's by a restaurant. Oh, shit. That was before that. All right. I got that one wrong. Never mind. <laughs> That's a stump. <laughs> it, it, says, it says technically it's outside of Chili's is the answer. I no, guess. that was not what I was thinking about anyways. That's, I know now what you're referring to. Yeah. Okay. What do you do? You have any do you have any odd, weird hobbies that we wouldn't expect? Personal, Nick. Man, uh, my life is it, like I grew up with music and games, bro. Like <laughs> that's kind of like that is that's kind of it. I mean, I love music and I do a lot of things revolved around music and 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 writing. And yeah, I love gaming and exercising is just a thing. It's important for me both physically and just mentally so i just i just do that too um yeah nothing outside of that except watching like a lot of youtube um people might not ex you know expect me that i actually do consume a lot of content in the internet space which is why i have been doing this for so long because that's this is what i consume this is what i do so yeah that's not nothing out of the ordinary for sure if uh if hypothetically a label's like, Nick, we got to give you, we're just going to give you a $10 million deal where you have to review every artist. I doesn't matter what that is, what that is, but now you have $10 million just fell on your lap and your family's taken care of new gear, whatever the case may be. What is this a fun toy you would buy and where would you travel in the world? Just a vacation for a week. And you can just a ball out toy. at that, at that location. Bro. I don't know. I'm, I'm a weird dude. Um, Whereas like I, I haven't bought a new guitar even in like the longest time because it's like when I get new things, I feel anxious because I feel like I have to utilize those things or I'm wasting them um, and they shouldn't be here. <laughs> I have a very weird mindset on that. Helps me not buy a bunch of shit, but ah, man, I don't know if I have to buy one fucking thing. This had to be uh, one. Like maybe it was just something that you always wanted that when you were growing up, you always wanted this. Like I always wanted, uh, like I, I said the story the other day, like in Richie Rich, there's a there's a scene where he gets like mm -hmm. a, a slide that goes from the top floor all the way down to the <laughs> pool. And I just thought that would be cool to have something like that. Uh, honestly, just a, I don't fucking know, man. I, I would buy, if I, I mean, if I had to, just for the sake of hilariousness, I would probably just do some dumb, expensive guitar that is just specked out for the dumbest shit possible that just looks flashy for absolutely no reason. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's probably all I would use it for. Yeah. That's cool. Like a 16 string or something? Yeah, I, just something absolutely. I would buy something for content. That's the fucked up part about me. I would buy something that I could turn into a YouTube video. <laughs> You spend, you're investing the money at that point. That's smart. Yeah, that's smart. Exactly. JB, what's another question you got for Nick? And so, Nick, did if any if someone came up to you and was just like, "Yo, you're gonna have to listen to this this music," would you be a person to be like, "Hey, could you just like let that you know? Could you email me?" Or would you be someone to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, bro, let, let's listen to it right now. Is this like if you bumped into him, like, in public at a show or something? Yeah. Okay. Like, listen to, like, their song? Like, from a Yeah, or just just whatever song they're offering. Or, or do you find it weird when people approach um, approach you since you have, like, a little bit more of a status on, the uh, on like, social media? I, I guess would, that's one more I would more definitely question. say, like, email me. Um, but also, I've, I haven't had anyone come up and be like, yo, check out my demo. Uh, if I do have people come up to me, it's usually the at headphones shows on. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's usually at shows and it's like, you know, they'll just say hi. They're usually pretty chill and like respectful, which is great. Um, awesome. 
Yeah, it, I have it. Yeah, if someone was like, "Hey, check out my band," I'd be like, "Yeah, you can come hang on stream." And when we do that, sometimes, <laughs> you know. Sweet, sweet. Earlier, you said you were really into games. What is the game that has consumed more hours than any other video game ever for you? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Okay. <laughs> now, thousand percent. It's, it's the easiest answer of my life. Skyrim is probably mine. I would say Skyrim. Maybe a thousand yeah. hours or so on that one. Yeah, WAF. Uh, yeah, that one. I mean, I've played that since I was a kid. Um, I don't play as much as play as much now. I just, I just don't even have the fucking time for it if I wanted to. Um, but that for sure, League of Legends. I spent way too much time playing that. So I played a lot of like the internet, like Twitch games, kind of. Um, as I got older, but when I was younger, it was like Smash Bros, um, like Mega Man Eight, Sonic Adventure Two Battle, um, stuff like that. That took a lot of my time i have i have no clue how many hours i have on that but it's a dumb amount all of those games are you down to do a couple really quick chat questions okay yeah go for it chat says name two or three of your favorite youtube channels Ooh, uh if it's non metal la beast um love la just... beast it's just it reminds me of OG YouTube, man. Like I that's that's how that's when I fell in love with YouTube was just like this everything super scuffed. There weren't these metas. It was just people doing fun, dumb shit for the sake of why He's not? The king like, of it. He's the king of it. Yeah, exactly. So he is definitely one of my favorites of all time just because of uh just because of that. It just it just feels like at home when you when I when I watch his stuff. So I absolutely love that. And he's still crazy. He's still absolutely wild. So yeah, if it's like not YouTube stuff, probably like him. Um, Ludwig is is super dope. He's definitely one of the bigger YouTubers. And if it's more like music related stuff, then right now Neopunk FM is fucking great. They're probably the, one of the few channels where I'm like actually waiting for an upload, and I'm like stoked when they got something because it's like just different and fun. Um, them and uh, I mean fucking. Um, Who's that fucking channel? Uh, I got. I, I, well, I also got. I got to actually give credits. I know sometimes people don't like him as much. I got to give credits to Jared Dines if he ever comes back and does like content. That dude, uh, I, you know, I know he gets sometimes black, like oh, fake guitar guy. Even though he's done so many good things, he's just like the one video which I thought was funny to be honest. <laughs> but that guy changed the game for like the entire metal YouTuber scene. Um, and. Even now, you start to still see people kind of get influenced by things he was doing fucking like five years ago. So him and like the do, uh, I'd say as well. Out of all the covers you've ever done, what was the most fun to do? Uh, fun is a nice question. Uh, it's uh, There's ones that are more rewarding than others, and I suffer a lot during them um, to get them. Uh, the most rewardingly fun one, like when I was finished it, I was like, that was amazing. And it felt fun because I accomplished the goal was through the fire and flames. Um, however, that was miserable at the same time to do. So the most ch the most fun one is probably one of the more lighthearted, easy ones to do. Um, Holy shit, I've done so many. It's got to be something that I covered from like the 2000s metalcore era because that stuff is, is so fun because I grew up with so much of it. And then when I got older, and I was actually able to play it on guitar. Um, yeah, probably like Bullet, something from Bullet for My Valentine or like Kill Switch Engage that I've done that those are or ABR. Um, we're just yeah, that, that, that stuff is oh, all that remains um, six. That's one of my fun. That's my one of my favorites. By far one of the funnest ones to do. We'll there do two, two more um okay. let's see uh something that you we, we wouldn't expect that you listen to and then second question favorite band right now uh, i listen to i mean i listen to a lot of, i listen to fucking lo-fi beats i listen to funk <laughs> quite a bit uh I, I listen to i don't know just weird shit i've been listening to a lot more like just general shoegaze e stuff um as well because like i want to listen to all this stuff and then usually like i like to bring it into metal right um especially now modern metal is just this diverse you know medium of like combining different genres anyways so um a lot of that as as well as uh a lot of just 2000 stuff i grew up on like fucking three days grace uh breaking benjamin 
um alexis on fire a thousand percent under oath that's that's the stuff like that was my childhood basically oh and rise against and then what was the other question bands right now or no uh something yeah your favorite band right now oh fuck <laughs> it's a lot of music <laughs> man um honestly my favorite band right now it varies all the time, right? It, it's 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 right now the let's say the flavor of the week has been um, uh, the Browning actually. Really? Shout out yeah. Hardcore Keem, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh, what can you talk about your experience being in either breather? We've we've had we've <laughs> had much of it. we've had much Sean much on the many. show, and I noticed in the Wikipedia that your name was listed, and I was like, what the f- Nick was in that? Can- how what was that experience like the experience was good like it, it, it just wasn't much of an experience the 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 parts where i existed there and we did things was like was good i had nothing to complain about um sean was super nice to me i know he doesn't have the best rep in the scene <laughs> uh which is you know it's understandable right uh, he was he respected me so i respected him for that uh, i think that was cool of him and uh, i like logan as well logan's a good homie of mine so yeah it was just like a quick uh they were looking for a guitarist and i was like i mean i could write some cool shit if you want and they're like okay and you know we did like one song and then they wanted to do like more like label signing stuff and i'm like yeah i ain't touching that shit um but like i'll act as like a producer still if you want like i'll be like a contract producer instead i don't care uh and they're like okay and then i haven't talked to, to him in i think two years since then <laughs> so i for sure no worries just curious because yeah. i saw that on on the you know yeah. wikipedia it, 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 they, they... Just, just, it just fizzled out and just that was it was just one of those like no one reached it and i was like all right I, i'm so busy with so many other things that like i forgot i was still you know, <laughs> i'm still in that band <laughs> yeah because i would have people like randomly ask me every like five months be like how's that the breather going i'm like what the fuck oh and i'm like it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's going great <laughs> hell yeah well, we got time for one more question each. JB, what will be your final question for Nick? Nick, you do so much for us as a community when it comes to, you know, everything. Um, is there anything that you're wanting the community to be doing for you specifically? Oh, I like that. Uh, I, I don't I don't need the community to fuck all for me, but I would love to see the community, you know, just keep making unique stuff because um, that's the stuff that helps grow the community and build it and further creativity within it. Um, you know, just like in any community, there's people doing, you know, metas and similar things. And then it becomes all copy paste and it, and it starts to become more of just like, uh, you know, a a feeding frenzy of who can get to things first. And it doesn't, it's not any, any more about like, what can I add to this space? It's just more like how many fucking views can I get from this type of video? Um, and that's, something i i don't i don't want to see happen too much you know it's it's I, i've been a part of that i mean especially over nine years you know you learn you grow um and i want to see people just be like what what do i offer you know what's special about me what's more fun what 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 can i add to this space what value do i add to this space because then the space adds value back to your life but then the space grows um if it's all about what can i get from this scene what can i get from doing this video or i get this then it's just if everyone's taking, then the scene just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That's just kind of how it goes. So I just I just want to see, uh, even for selfish reason of you know, I'd love to see the scene keep going because I'm a part of it, <laughs> right? I just want to see it continue to grow genuinely as a fan of the scene, and of course as a person you know who's technically a stakeholder in the scene as is my career as part of it. Um, but just to just so it doesn't fizzle out and die because there's so much amazing music, amazing bands you know, amazing stories, amazing content. I mean, there's educational things in there. There's, there's a lot in there and there's been points where the scene has been given a bit of a spotlight and it's done well and then never reached that bigger mainstream area um, and just has fallen short of it. And I know this scene, you know, the metal scene, alternative scene, all of it has the potential to be, you know, this big big larger than life thing still now to this day that intersects with mainstream like nothing else i mean the next generation is all growing up they're all growing up as metal kids <laughs> so it's like we're not complaining that's amazing we're not complaining yeah, about that's that. amazing so 
with all those metal kids, you know, in that growing up now and pushing that for the next generation, I want to, you know, that's, that's the best thing I, I could ask for from the community and the scene is just make cool shit, think outside the box, bring new ideas into this space, expand on them. Think of what you can do to have that video that everyone has to like, when they see that title and that thumbnail, they're like, I have to fucking watch this. Cause this is something different and new and something that I've never would have thought of. Cause that's help. That's what helps inspires others. And then those people get inspired that inspire others. Just that's the most important is the constant I sharing of ideals, ideas, and of bringing value to the, to the scene. Nick, we appreciate your time. I have one final question for you. Uh, the show it. is called local band Smokeouts. We have a lot of smaller bands that watch this show mm -hmm. over your musical journey. What is the best piece of musical advice somebody in the industry has given you that was like an eye opener moment for you or made you take your career just a little bit more seriously like it was just really sound advice that resonated with you um oof i've definitely learned a lot from people anytime i meet a new person i always you know i, I don't ever think i you know I, I know more than them or any of that i'm always like what you know if they're saying something and they're giving knowledge i, I want to take that in and learn i'm always learning so I'm always learning things from people. I don't know if there was any one particular moment where like a person sat down with me and they're like, listen, kid, you know, <laughs> do this and you'll go far. But by far the thing I learned the most just from people in the scene is to don't be a piece of shit to people because you will be surprised. Um, you know, just, you know, I'm not a spiritual dude, but I, and I don't necessarily believe in like karma, but I believe in just the logic that if you're a piece of shit to somebody, just it kind of goes through the cycles of that affects someone else and someone else. And somehow that that shit does get back to you. And, you know, it it's there's no point. Just, you know, don't don't be a dick to people. Don't think you're the shit. You're not. I've been doing this for nine years and I'm definitely don't. I think I'm far from the shit. You want to always be open to learn and to just try new things. And again, tying to what I was saying before, what do you bring into this space that's unique and that's you that when people see what you have to offer in terms of yourself or your content or your music, they won't, you know, they won't have any other question or, or say other than how do I get more of that? Like it's, it's not, don't just wait for someone to fucking a label to come hit you up and change your life. Like, no, go out there, fucking bring value to people's lives, change the game. Don't be a piece of shit and good things will happen for you. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic advice. Nick, have a, have a great day, dude. We appreciate you spending some time with us. You did not have to do it, but it's very kind of you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Nocturno! Hell yeah! Thank you, Nick, so much, bro. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Have a great one. We appreciate it. You too, you guys.